And welcome back to the channel where we talk about only good comics. I'm Brant, and this is a Saturday edition of Friday First. This is that series where we talk about those brand new number one issues, new character de debuts, new story arcs, and the like. And this episode is uh, covering books that are coming out on October 23rd, 2024. So first of all, apologies for this being a day late. Uh, it had to happen sometime. Finally missed uh, my, my deadline, I was uh, out of town at a show, uh, left Thursday, uh, did the show Friday. It was a, a craft show, um, kind of a flea market kind of vibe for uh, the stuffies, the plushies. And um, now my sister-in-law is running it for the rest of the weekend. But because of that, I was behind schedule. I only got to read one of the books from, last, from, from this uh, past Wednesday so far. Uh, at least of, of the first first issues and um, I didn't have a chance to pre-record this video so this is the earliest that I've been able to possibly do this it's 5 30 a.m on Saturday morning <laughs> so um, here I am trying to trying to get this out for you as soon as possible so anyway uh, a lot of books to talk about but not a lot to recap so we'll do that first we'll get that out of the way so the first book that uh, we're obviously going to talk about is um, Batman and Robin, year one, uh, issue one. This was uh, the only first issue from last week's show that I managed to uh, read in time to, to do this recording. This is uh, written by Mark Wade with uh, art by Chris Samney. And if you remember, I talked about this creative team, got me excited for this book um, because before it wasn't really on my radar. I'm not really a big uh, follower of the year one books and things like that. But because of this creative team, I definitely wanted to check this one out. And uh, it was it was a pretty solid story. You know, nothing, no new information, right? Because we've seen, you know, year one stories from Batman. We've seen the first, uh, you know, years of, of Robin, Dick Grayson and all this stuff. But it's just, you know, it's, it's charming the way that this story came together with this particular creative team. The way that they told the story, how um, eager... Uh, Nightwing was or sorry uh, Robin was back then even at that point he was like insistent hey we're partners hey we're equals hey I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do it was just it was very Dick Grayson and it's the Dick Grayson that we've come to love in comic form um, that was just kind of endearing and, and there was also a little bit more definitely a different take on on their history because a little bit more parental guidance from uh, Bruce Wayne in this but I like the way that the story came together. Uh, the art is really good. This team works very well together. Uh, so I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, is it like something you have to read? No. But is it, is it an enjoyable story by creators that I'm a fan of? Absolutely. So with that said, let's get into the books that are coming out next week on October 23rd. All right, first up, we have our first of three honorable mentions. This one is DC Horror Presents Issue 1. This is uh, by writer, uh, writer Swanthala Boulay and Drek Morta Boulay. I'm not familiar with them. Um, and uh, I don't know. There's like different writers for this. So I, I don't know if it's like an anthology story or what it is. Uh, it says uh, these are a few of our favorite things. Some of the most dark and cunning minds in horror comes DC Horror Presents, a new collection of gruesome tales set in the DCU. So, yeah, these are uh, this is an anthology full of different horrific tales just in time for Halloween. 32 pages, 399, so a very short story. So if you're really into horror and you like some of these uh, horror writers, go check this one out. Next up, we have Hack Slash Equals Body Bags, issue one. This is the, uh, the crossover of these two franchises. Uh, is writer Tim Seeley, art, artist uh, Stefano Caselli. And uh, this is the Hack Slash series colliding with the Body Bag series. Um, it says the world's collide in the most twisted crossover of 2024 that reintroduces the cult favorite crew of Body Bags from Eisner nominee Tim Seeley and OG Hack Slash artist Stefano Caselli. So um, you get those uh, colliding. So if you're a big fan of either one of these franchises or both, uh, this is one to definitely check out for you. And lastly, for the honorable mentions, we have the Powerpuff Girls Halloween Special Issue 1. Um, this is a 40-page book for $5.99 with a cardstock cover. And uh, Dynamite's been doing pretty good with the Powerpuff Girls series. It's been pretty fun. 
uh, very reminiscent of the TV show if you are a fan. Um, so this is obviously a, you know, a one shot story for Halloween. So they're going to, uh, it says, uh, will their Halloween bickering keep the petite powerhouses from thwarting their villains? So uh, they're going to be, you know, kind of griping at each other. And in the meantime, the villains are, are trying to wreak havoc. So should be a fun time. All right, getting into those rated books, so or ranked, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the Horizon Experiment, The Sacred Damned, issue number one. This is by uh, Sabir Perzita, or per Perzada, sorry, I, I totally butchered that, I apologize, uh, with art by Michael Walsh. Now, Sabir um, co-wrote a lot of the Miss Marvel stuff and has uh, done several series. Um, uh, it says uh, Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, Dandelion, and then Michael Walsh from The Silver Coin. So... If you remember, the last one was a, a James Bond take. This one is kind of a, a take on um, John Constantine. It calls it a Muslim John Constantine, new type of exorcist re-examining modern horror for fans of the Department of Truth in Philadelphia. So basically, it's taking uh, TV writers, which Sabir is, and um, kind of t doing mashups on classic concepts featuring... Uh, people of different ethnicities, cultures, backgrounds, etc. In this one, again, a Muslim version of John Constantine. So uh, if that sounds cool to you, um, you might want to check this one out. I I thought the, the previous one um, was decent. I don't remember the name of it, but it was uh, it was like the Asian James Bond concept. Um, I thought that was decent. It could have been a little bit stronger, but I really like Sabir's writing. Uh, been a fan of Sabir's for many years now, um, so I, I have a little more, a uh, little more hope in this one. I'm still giving it, get it, gonna give it a possibly good, just because, again, with these kind of mashups, you never know what to expect. Plus, they're they're one shot stories, 40 pages, 3.99. So, again, you never really know what to expect from them. Which one's gonna take off, if any? Uh, the cover looks pretty cool. Um, it's going to definitely have a, you know, a solid creative team on this one. And, you know, because it's supernatural, we're here in October, it kind of matches. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what it has in store though. We've got the cursed library Omega issue one. Uh, this is the, uh, obviously the next chapter of this cursed library series from Archie comics, um, digging into the supernatural side of it. Jinx is confronted with Lu Lucifer, which is the devil. Um, in this one, we got Madam Satan is in prison. So very, very supernatural, very, uh, you know, spiritually infused, I guess you could say. It's, uh, you know, written by Elliot Rahal and, and Magdalene Basagio with art by Craig Carmack. And uh, yeah, so yeah, if you've been enjoying the Curse Library stuff from Archie, uh, this will definitely be right up your alley. For me, I'm a little bit behind. I, I haven't read Alpha yet, and I'm not sure I read whatever was before that either, or maybe I maybe I did. I'm forgetting. I don't know. Either way, I'm giving this one a potentially good just based on a uh, previous experience with these characters in the modern era. Next is another new uh, series from Image Comics called Voices in My Head. Um, this is by Joe Pruitt with art by Phil Hester and Juan Doe and Andrew Robinson and Michael Gatos. I guess there are several stories. Yeah, it's a collection of disturbing tales. So another anthology style horror, uh, you know, comic. We've got um, several, it looks like at least four stories in this. Uh, Brian Boland doing a cover. And uh, it doesn't really give you much to go on as far as what uh, these stories are. But if you are a really big horror fan, you like any of these creators and you like anthologies, this is one to check out. Uh, none of those things are really my thing, but I definitely wanted to mention it. Uh, so I'm giving it a possibly good. Um, don't know if I'm actually going to pick this one up yet, but I did want to make you aware. Also, one that's not on the list that I'll just throw out there is Alien Romulus. I just I stopped putting those on here because I don't read any of them. But if you're an Alien fan, just know there's a new Alien comic out this week as well. Next up, yet another Image Comics series. This one is called Null Hunter, issue one. And this is by Michael Walsh, again. Michael Walsh got a lot of work coming out this week uh, with art by Gustavo Vargas. And uh, this is interesting because it's it's a cyberpunk uh, kind of sci-fi take on the, uh, the Gods of Olympus. So it, it says it right there on the cover, an Olympus saga. 
Um, but it also describes it as a kinetic cyberpunk retelling of the labors of Hercules. So it, very interesting. If you, if you like that story of, with Hercules going through the, you know, the, the various labors and trials and everything. Um, but, and, and you're a sci-fi fan and you like cyberpunk content, uh, this might be right up your alley. It's, it's a weird mashup, but it's one that really piques my curiosity. Um, and this cover is kind of striking. It gives me cyberpunk vibes. Uh, so it really interesting, you know, kind of contrast there. So I'm giving this one a potentially good and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll see how this one goes and, uh, if it's, you know, this surprise hit or not, <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right. Next up is a trio of DC all in, uh, you know, initiative titles. So first up we have the flash issue 14 here. Um, same creative team, I believe, uh, Simon Spurrier with, uh, art by Vasco, uh, Georglove, Gior I don't, I'm butchering that. So, uh, anyway, Simon Spurrier has been writing the flash, but, and this is continuing from everything, but it is DC all in. So we're getting a little bit of a fresh start. Maybe it's a new arc or new, new, uh, direction for it. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, Wally is beginning to, uh, transform into a new form of himself and he's keeping it secret, keeping it low key. I've kind of fallen off the flash series, but maybe this is, will be a jumping on point. I don't know. Uh, I'm curious about it. So I might check it out. And, uh, for this, I'm going to give this one a possibly good just because again, I fell off of it because it was, it, it kind of lost me somewhere along the way but I'm hoping that this is a fresh start and I can jump back into it. Then we have Detective Comics issue 1090. Um, this is written by Tom Taylor with art by uh, Mikkel Janin. So really curious to see uh, Tom Taylor's uh, take on this because we are diving back into the death of uh, Thomas and Martha Wayne and some kind of revelation that is, uh, that is gonna come to light here. It says, long ago, the murders of Thomas and Martha Wayne changed Gotham forever, but there is something you never knew about the Dark Knight's tragic origin, which has been lying in wait to strike at Batman ever since that fateful night in Crime Alley. And now all these years later, the ghost of Gotham's past begins to reveal itself. So very interesting. I always, uh, I, I tire of the origin, but I always welcome like new little nuggets that kind of build off of that. They kind of give us new information, whether it introduces a new villain or whatever. Um, I think the Court of Owls is a good example of that. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens with this one. I, I do like Tom Taylor. I like Batman. I like, you know, his story. So we'll see how this one plays out. But for me, I'm giving uh, Detective Comics a promisingly good. And again, this is a new arc, new creators, uh, part of the All In initiative. So it could be a jumping on point for you. And lastly, of this trio, speaking of Tom Taylor, he has exited this book. This is Nightwing issue 119. A new creative team has taken over with this issue. Uh, this is Dan Waters uh, writing and Dexter Soy on art. So we are taking off in a new direction. And uh, it looks like someone outside of Blood Bloodhaven may be controlling all the gangs within Bloodhaven. And uh, Nightwing has to do the unthinkable, no matter what. The cost may be um, so this they call it a groundbreaking new arc that will redefine what it means to be a hero. So we'll see what what that has in store for anybody that kind of fell off during Tom Taylor's run or got uh, disillusioned by it because it jumped all over the place. This is a great jumping on point. This is part of the all in initiative. So new team, new direction, new arc. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. I, I actually like Dan Waters writing. So I'm giving this one a potentially good and uh, we'll see uh, if it can, you know, pick up the pieces and take us into a bold new direction. So I don't know. I'm, I'm excited, though. Next up is the feeding issue one. This is also from Image Comics, brand new series. This is by David M. Booher with art by Drew Zucker. Uh, so uh, David did, uh, you know, Ghostbusters, Rain, Canto, uh, Specs, different things. Big fan of, of David's work. Um, Drew Zucker did Canto as well and the house I'm not as familiar with with Drew's work but I've been impressed with what I've seen um, I know uh, Metal Ninja Studios had a hand in this I think they did the logo and stuff I've just recently started working with them I haven't done any work for them but I it's coming so I'm, I'm excited about that uh, but anyway 
Um, I have no connection to this book. I, I just want to put that out there. But this is a horror one shot. Um, sorry, I said series before, but it is a one shot, four ninety nine book. Um, and it is. Uh, it says it's an extra length horror one shot where Nolan Ward has done everything to forget his disturbing past, drinking drugs, day trading, sex, and still the past is caught up with him. Uh, anyway, this he has this twisted painting called the the feeding that eats people. It's hungry. But Nolan has to try to stop this. I think he steps into it, and uh, it's crazy. It's interesting, and it's kind of a take on, uh, I don't know. We, we've seen a lot of things with paintings and horror in the past, so uh, very interesting. And it, again, it says from the uh, Canto, Eisner and Glad award dominated writer and fan favorite artist. So um, if you're a fan of either one of those or you're a fan of this kind of uh, story, uh, you might want to check it out. I'm giving that a, a potentially good just based on David Boer's uh, you know, past work that I have enjoyed. Next up from Mad Cave Studios is Hour of the Wolf issue one. This is the new series in the uh, in the um, uh, the new universe that Mark London has started crafting. The first book was Revolution 9, which I really enjoyed. Uh, this is now Hour of the Wolf. It's in the underworld. Um, I, I think is the overall universe that uh, they're calling it. Um, it says each miniseries set within can be savored as a standalone serial while serving as a stepping tone stone towards endless night. The must read crossover guaranteed uh, to blow your minds in 2025, you know, some, some hyperbole uh, thrown in there. But again, I really like that other series uh, revolution nine, which, you know, comes from RV nine and all that stuff. And I like Mark London's writing here. Um, the art is by Danilo Beirut. I'm not familiar with uh, Danilo's work, but uh, the cover looks cool. And it's um, it's got elements in it that I like. So again, we're, we're talking about paintings. And I was getting like, when I was talking about the feeding, I was thinking about this one. And I, then I was like, I realized that, oh no, that's a different story. But in this one, this uh, character, Owen, finds himself trapped in a painting that they were set out to destroy. And now they only have one hour to kind of do the business, kind of take care of what needs to be taken care of and get out of it. Um, or they'll become a, a cross-dimensional walking ghost. Um, so it's a interesting concept. Um, definitely kind of a... Um, what's the word? Uh, kind of uh, contained within itself. But I'm, I'm curious to see how this ties in to the larger story that you're telling in the whole Underworld universe. We have another series coming in November, I think. Yeah, Exit City. So all three of these are going to be part of this, uh, you know, cohesive universe that Mark London, London is building. So I don't know. Matt Cave's doing some really strong stuff here. I'm giving this one a promisingly good, again, based on my past experience with Mark London's work and becoming a, a fan of his work. So we'll see if this one holds up to that standard. Continuing on with my top five um, this week, Green Lantern Dark. Issue one, this is um, written by Tate Bromball with art by Werther Del Idra. Um, I, I'm somewhat familiar with Werther's work, not so much with uh, Tate Bromball. So I don't really know what to expect from this. Um, it, this is a post-apocalyptic Earth, uh, Earth and it's overrun with monsters. Um, this is like in the future, obviously. And uh, there's a... Green Lantern that appears out of the darkness here. Um, she's been missing for years and on this island of New England, uh, which uh, I guess Solomon Grundy's undead army has been running rampant. And uh, we, it's interesting. We got, oh yeah, celebrated artist of Smash Hit, Something is Killing the Children. I knew that name sounded familiar. So if you like the art from Something is Killing the Children, um, you're definitely going to like the art here. Uh, House of Slaughter is the writer here. So this, these are creators that worked on something that's killing the children. So that gives me a lot more hope in this book. Um, yeah. So this is, uh, this says it's the remains of the fan favorite tangent universe. So I'm not really familiar with this. I haven't read anything from the tangent universe, not familiar at all. Um, didn't really know what this was about until I read this just now. Uh, this is a 56 page book for four ninety nine, So pretty good value as well. I'm, I'm liking the creative team. So um, at the same time, I'm going to give it a potentially good with, you know, I, I want to give it a promisingly good, but I'm going to, I'm going to stay tentative 
just because it's not connected to like any current ongoing stuff. So I'm going to give it a potentially good, but I'm, I'm low key excited about this now from green lantern to green arrow issue. Number seven, this is the oversized anniversary issue, 350 legacy numbering for green arrow aftermath of absolute power DC all in, I believe it's still the same creative team. Uh, yeah. Joshua Williamson, uh, new, new artist, maybe um, a man K not, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that anyway. Um, Obviously, you know, Green Arrow did the unthinkable to protect all his loved ones. And now he's got to deal with the ramifications of coming out of this. Can his family forgive him? Um, this is opening a brand new chapter. Got this. Uh... Oh, it actually says new creative team of writer Chris Condon and artist Montos. So this might. Oh, OK. So we get stories from both of them, I guess. So we get. The closing out story from Joshua Williamson, and then we get a, a story from the new creative team that's taking it over with next issue. So that's good. This is this is a nice jumping on point then, so you can get a feel for what the series is going to be uh, going forward. And uh, this is a forty page book for four ninety nine. So uh, you know, Green Arrow's been really good, and I'm curious to see what the new direction is going to be, how it's going to um, you know mesh with the previous. It says. Uh, Chris Condon is from the Infield Gang Massacre, that Texas Blood. I didn't read either of those series, so I'm not familiar. Um, if you are a fan of either of those, you might like the new direction. But I'm, I'm curious about this one. And uh, I'm going to give it a promisingly good just because I, I know Joshua Williamson's writing something in here. And I've really loved his uh, take on Green Arrow. So, All right, final two. We've got Iron Man issue number one. This is uh, written by Spencer Ackerman with art by Julius Ota. I'm not familiar with either one of these uh, creators. Um, it says uh, Ackerman's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. So that's interesting. It'll be, uh, it'll be really, uh, I'm curious to see what a journalist will do with the story. It says a new brutal era begins. Roxxon and Aim are teaming up to take on Stark Unlimited. Um, and uh, yeah, Iron Man's a lot angrier than he used to be. Uh, he's got new armor, old enemies, and unbelievable twist abound in this fresh take on a fury-powered Iron Man. So uh, it looks like we're going to get a very different version of Iron Man in this story. I'm here for it. I'm, I'm curious. I'm excited. Um, did Julius do the uh, cover art? No. Yasmin Putri. So I don't know what the interior art even looks like. So I'm, I'm very curious about this book. Um, always willing to try a new Iron Man run. I'm going to give this one a promisingly good just based on the concept, which has kind of sold me. But again, I know nothing about this creative team. So, you know, we'll see. And last, of course, Absolute Wonder Woman issue number one by Kelly Thompson and Hayden Sherman. Um, and this is, uh, you know, Wonder Woman getting the absolute universe treatment. It says, without the island paradise, without the sisterhood that shaped her, without a mission of peace, what's left is the absolute Amazon. So that's really interesting. If you strip away everything that makes Wonder Woman Wonder Woman, what are you left with? And I would imagine it's a brutal, violent killer. <laughs> I mean, because we've seen Wonder Woman push to that limit before with, with all those constraints, but without all of that lifted, what does that make her? So I'm, I'm very curious to see what this take on Wonder Woman is. I like Kelly Thompson's writing. Um, not a fan of everything, but a lot of things Kelly Thompson writes, I'm all in for. Not familiar with Hayden Sherman, but I'm I'm here for this series. Absolute Batman was a treat. Um, I, I think this one will be equally as, as good and strong and, and a fresh take on a uh, you know, classic character. Uh, definitely um, a jumping on point. It's a brand new issue. A br I mean, a brand new series, brand new number one issue, and it's a completely new universe that we've only seen a glimpse of so far. So, yeah, if you like to see twist on, you know, classic characters, this is definitely one to check out. And it plays into a larger story, obviously building up between the two universes and dark side and all of that colliding down the line. So uh, for me, I'm giving this one a promisingly good and uh, I, I'm just like. I want to give it a positively good, but I, I'm definitely going to read the first issue and see what I think about it. So definitely a promisingly good for me, but uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. So that's it for the number one issues. I'll just share as usual, a few other books that I'm also looking forward to uh, coming out next week. 
We've got Dazzler issue number two. Issue one was a lot of fun. And that's that's all I can ask for from Dazzler. And, uh, you know, seeing all the uh, the different characters that she's got on her uh, road crew and, and her team and everything was fun. Um, you know, seeing her just continue to sing uh, while she's battling and these these new lyrics that they posted in the back, Jason Lou writing it. And uh, I, I just thought it was a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm here for it. I'm ready for the next issue. Uh, TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue number three. Uh, the first two issues have been really strong. Uh, and this one, you know, it's uh, continues to be written, obviously, by Jason Aaron with uh, art by Cliff Chang. And um, it says uh, this one is focused on Leo. So we've seen a, a, an issue focusing on Raphael, Raphael in uh, prison. We've seen Michelangelo as this big reality star. And now we're getting into Leo who it says it's on the banks of Genghis. He has found a turtle colony that shows him a simpler way to be, but even these turtles have their foes. So he's trying to live his best life of peace and just kind of, you know, detach and still violence finds him. So that's a very Leo kind of story. I'm, I'm very interested in that. Uh, X factor number three. Um, first issue was really good. Second issue, a little bit, um, less action going on a little bit more of just kind of team shakeups and, and trying to, you know, figure out where everybody's allegiances lie and all that stuff. Uh, so now we'll see what, what happens now that we've got the actual team and we're going into a story. Um, it, there's a, a lunar base that has gone out of control and havoc and frenzy have to stop a foe that can predict every move. And we also get to see a little bit more about granny smite. So, which was, <laughs> A really interesting character from last issue. Uh, Gromit's number five, just a fun series. Every issue is just a party. I'm here for it. It says, good times turn ugly when drunken jocks do jock things, harsh everyone's buzz with their brutal stupidity and test the strength and loyalty of weakened friendship. So, uh, yeah, fun times. <laughs> a little light reading. Um, it may really is light reading, though. Scarlet Witch issue number five. We've got a haunting in Hell's Kitchen as Scarlet Witch teams up with Daredevil. To uh, get rid of this, uh, you know, this spirit that is uh, haunting everyone, and uh, Wanda realizes she's uh, encountered her before. I again really enjoyed Steve Orlando's run on Scarlet Witch through various series, so I'm always excited to see a new issue of that. Uh, the Tin Can Society issue number two. The first issue was really strong, really solid. Uh, love to see those kind of stories. I always like to see those stories where you have a group of friends. They grow up and then something tragic happens and they're all suspects. And that's what this story is uh, in a nutshell. And I, I can't wait to see how this plays out and, and how everyone uh, kind of gets uh, checked off the list. You know what I mean? And see who actually the culprit is. So a uh, really strong start to that. Really good art. Really great character work in this. So if you haven't checked it out, go check out issue one. And then we have Void, Void Rivals issue number 13. Um, obviously I love this series. We have Pythona from Cobra Law is in this book now as we bring in the G.I. Joe factor to this. We've seen Transformers and Void Rivals collide. We've seen connections with the Energon ports and all this stuff. And now we're bringing in G.I. Joe uh, to, you know, further expand this side of the universe. And I am excited for it. Uh, and we're going to see what happens and what Cobra Law has to do with all of this. And uh, last but not least, of course, Rook Exodus number six is the end of the story arc. Um, epic conclusion to the first uh, chapter. It's Rook versus Ursaw, winner takes all. And we find out who Ursaw is and what he really wants from Exodus. This is one of the best books on the stand. Hands down, my opinion. If you have not read Rook Exodus, definitely check out that first trade when it comes out or seek out the back issue. So it is uh, definitely worth the read. But that's it. That's all the books that I have to talk about. Thank you for sticking with me. And I apologize again for it being a day late. Had to happen eventually. Um, I'm, I'm glad I made it to the year mark without that happening, really. Uh, I did like post it one time, like really late Friday night, basically Saturday morning, but I still counted it. But this was the first uh, episode that's like officially, okay, this is the next day, right? So again, had to happen. I'm proud of my run. Hopefully it won't happen again anytime soon, but I hope you enjoyed it all the same. 
had a nice treat for your Saturday to <laughs> spend it with me for a few minutes talking about comics. Uh, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, really does help the channel. Of course, if you don't want to miss any of the episodes or any other content going up on this channel, hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss any of that. Uh, leave a comment, share it, do all that stuff. Follow me across social media at Only Good Comics and type in OnlyGoodComics.com to take you right back to this YouTube channel where we talk about only good comics. Until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, keep reading, and I'll see you soon.